Hello and welcome to, I don't even know what we're calling this, Shimmy the Animation, the after show. I'm your host. You got it. George, and with me, like always, is Barry. Punch, punch. And kick, kick, and... Kick, kick. Play arcades. Um, We got the <laughs> second episode this week of uh, the Shimmy the Animation. Um, I, I, I think this one is actually a lot better than the first episode. I think they, like, stopped doing these weird, like, sh- oh, you're walking, here's Tom. And, like, they kind of shortened all that talking stuff and, like, weird encounters down. And then try to add more story to some of the characters that kind of didn't get story in the game. Um, what's your thoughts on this one so far? Your overview? Um, I thought it was a solid episode. We're diving right in now and just about everything's from the game itself. We're not seeing like any prequel material. Nothing really new added. There were a few things. Can I touch mm-hmm. on them now or are we going to run through I, the I, episodes? I, I actually have them right here. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll start with the first thing we saw in this episode that was kind of new. Uh, it actually has an opening, like, it actually has an anime opening, like a cheesy theme song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do you think about the theme song? I thought it was just, like, generic, but I like that kind of stuff in anime. It's like, it fits in. Yeah, yeah, this was the um, end credits last week, and it makes sense because you see that a lot now where they they don't do the beginning until the end. You know, mm. like James Bond did it for a few years with Daniel Craig, um... I, I just saw a movie recently where they like held off the like what should have been the opening titles at the end. But what I like now is that now that we're in the second episode, they do the intro at the intro, and then the outro is actually like new. It's but new it's, from last week. Yeah. It's like yeah, and I'm wondering if I'm wondering if each week's going to be different end credits, like because I can't imagine them doing like episode twelve and they're in Shenmu two territory and it's like Nozomi credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> So I've got to imagine it's going to change it up. Maybe we'll get Goro and then like Tom, you know, who knows? Like maybe they'll do character centric uh, credits each week. But um, yeah, going back to the intro, I thought it was cool. I think the music itself is a little forgettable. Mm. Um, uh, But yeah, this is but then again, this is like Shenmue the animation Mm -hmm. uh, to the point where the entire English voice cast um, minus Rio is new, and the entire Japanese voice cast minus Rio is new, and they're all anime veterans. So yeah, um, yeah. What what do you think about that too? I don't know if we talked about the total recasting. What? How do you feel about that? Like, uh, it, I mean, the animation is different. I mean, it's the same thing we had, you know, an issue with the Sonic movie when it first happened. Mm-hmm. But then when you watch the movie, like you're like, okay, I can see why they hired this person. I'm okay right. with saying that I was wrong about you know I'm not, I'm just saying I uh, the first the, the Shimu games aren't known for its strong uh, voice cast let's be honest there's nostalgia with them but l- like compared to the new voice actors they have for the new mm. Yakuza games you know there's like a big disparity in like quality in my opinion so I'm not that wor- I'm not that ups- upset that they uh, recast it or anything like that right yeah because I, I came across that because um, next week I'm actually having uh, Lisa Wilkerson on the Swing and Report show on Wednesday night I don't forgot if I told you about that it was just kind of a last minute get mm-hmm. um, but uh, she's not in the anime so I want to talk to her a little bit about that but she is not an anime voice actor she did a few video games and she does a lot of journal uh, journalism like online um uh, you're not online, but like, you know, uh, on camera journalist stuff. Mm. So I, I can imagine, and I want to hear her thoughts, so I won't speak for her, but I can imagine there's no animosity because it's kind of like, well, that's not my realm. It makes mm. sense if you're doing like a narrative thing. It's not just video game cutscenes. Um, but I, I'd be interested to hear what she thinks because um, what I find interesting is that Greg Chun, is that how I say it? From yeah. Judgment? Yeah, that's right. He, I don't think he returns for this. So it's going to be interesting to see if he, he returns, but I don't think he will. But um, having said all that, uh, kind of off topic, what I was trying to say is that Nozomi is really kind of the star of this episode. Oof, yeah, that and, was actually my next topic, but yeah, go on. And um, and I, I think she's so much better than the English, uh, the, the original game's Nozomi, that she really can carry an episode now. Oh, yeah, and in this episode, like, right away, she talks about she's going to do a favor for Ryu, so instead of you bothering her in the game, like, because 
the game is seen through the point of view of Ryu, and in this episode, they really showed that they're going to change the narrative, and they're going to let mm-hmm. you, like other characters, be actual characters. Like, she comes and approaches Ryu in, in this one, and asks and says she's going to help him with the Chinese uh, translation thing. Um, she doesn't right. really do anything in the episode. Like, they don't focus on her as much as I thought they would. But uh, she does have this scene and another scene later that we'll talk about. But uh, in this scene, what do you think about that change? Because I like it. Like, Nozomi in the game was like, oh, no, Ryu, please no. Oh, no. Like, right. all the time, like, shy, like, the stereotypical <laughs> Japanese girl, I guess. I liked it because, you know, in the game, they're NPCs. They go about their business and you find them. Very rarely does someone find you. And we see uh, Nozomi being a little more proactive in the plot. We see the old man Mm -hmm. being a little more proactive to the point where I went back and watched a playthrough on YouTube, just skimmed through it. Because I was like, was he, was the old man there? Did she say this? Like, no, they weren't. So it's, it's kind of nice to see them break out of their NPC role and really play a part in the story. Yeah, and in this episode, we had the old man in the park. In in the game, to me, I, I haven't played it in a while, but like in the first game, it felt like he just showed you the move. Like you just meet him and mm-hmm. he tells you and he introduces himself and it's over. In this one, he refuses to, but he is your dad's friend and he does talk to his um, reused family. I mean, mm-hmm. adopted. I mean, they're not his real family, but uh, uh, what do you think of... Oh, also, the old guy is kind of important in the Shimyu game because it's kind of a leftover thing from that uh, the old man in the peach tree. Right. Yeah, so it feels like him in the park under the tree is literally an homage to that. So he, this character also plays a more important part in this episode compared to the game. Did you like that change? I did. And, you know, you mentioned the old man in the peach tree. If people want to learn more about that, they can check out our Sega Talk episodes where uh, we did Shenmue 1, 2, and then 3 is releasing the week that this goes out. But, um, yeah, it's just kind of fascinating to to see something in, you know, 2022 calling back to something in 1990, like, 7 that yeah. Suzuki thought up, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to bring up Nozomi's bedroom. Like, we get to see little glimpses inside areas we never saw in the game i thought that was really cool yeah i didn't i didn't get a screenshot of that but you're right they she was studying and her mom called her which is which is funny because um in shimmy 3 i just got to the part where you could call her on the phone Mm -hmm. and it's like the mom's still calling her and i'm like man it's been 20 years i'm like oh i forgot this is supposed to be right after two (laughs) so it's like oh my god oh yeah i forget right um oh yeah one of my favorite scenes uh when you what was uh what's that bar called um hold uh is it heartbeats? Heartbeats. There you go. You're right. Yeah. And then they they give the ultimate meme line. Uh, give this schoolboy some milk. They even added this yeah. in the anime. Uh, I loved it. I was like, okay, they're really playing it yeah. up like the game. They they know. But they did not do the sailor joke, which I'm glad. It's it's not a joke, but it's become a meme. Like, do you know where sailors hang out? Instead, he said, um, what is it? He said, like, do you know who where people who work at you know like. Yeah. Harper gang would be, you know, like he was asking, it was a little you, more specific. It was like, uh, do you know in the harbor where illegals could come in or illegal immigrants or whatever, like smuggling immigrants? Right. And he it just was. Cut to the chase. Yeah. And yeah. it wasn't just a silly, like, sailor's plot, which is a good rewrite and probably should have been in the, in the video game that way instead of sailors. I think it was a mistranslation, to be quite honest. I have to agree. And then in this one, we also see Charlie, the gangster, and we actually see them behind the scenes, which we don't get to see at all their point of view. And mm-hmm. it's like they don't like the Ryu's asking around about them and stuff. What do you think about his gang actually getting some more, I guess, screen time? And in the game, they didn't really have anything. They were just an obstacle. I thought it was cool. I, um, I liked seeing the other side of things again it made me go back and be like is that even a cutscene? no it's not so it's it's cool to get bonus material even though we're like within the game storyline itself now um they also created a new when they had that big fight scene that was a new location originally it was just in the outdoor area by the park where they were doing construction yeah i believe and so i thought that was really cool i think it correct me if i'm wrong but it started in the park and then it ended at this construction area or something like that. But it, it just seems like they kind of moved things around and made it seem a little more uh, dynamic and that you were moving through this, the area more and exploring different sections rather than returning to the same, I guess, like 2D background every, yeah. every episode, which was nice because the old man's like right there. 
Mm-hmm. So it would be a little small world to be like, oh, he got into a fight and then he walked 20 feet and started training with the old man. Um, you know? They also, like, bring up the fact that they're at war with Chin or whatever, the, the guy from the harbor. Uh, mm-hmm. Was that their actual plot in the game? I forgot. Were they actually at war with him? I can't recall. Um, I'd, I'd assume it's a part of the plot, though. So I, I don't I don't think it's a new thing, but maybe it just feels expanded on. I think the big thing with this anime is that we're getting information in a 22-minute episode that we usually get over the span of, like, two or three hours. Mm-hmm. Um, so what really helps now is that there's a lot of information you kind of forget about because someone brings it up, but Rio might not put it in his notebook. You know, like, oh, the gang, they fight the other gang. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It might come from some old lady rather than the, the antagonists themselves. So and I thought that was great. And the game is a lot about, like, the carrot and the stick. It's always like, you, oh, you solve this problem, it opens up this other guy you have to talk to, and it just continues for, like, hours. And it's like, sometimes if you just go through the story, you miss some of the information because it's like, you could, you could, like, in three, like, you could, I didn't really explore, so I just went through the story a lot, and it was like, this thing happened. Right. Um, um, go on. Well, I wanted to talk about the arcade. Yeah, I, ha- I have big pictures of that, but yes. before we talk about that, um, there was another scene with Naomi that I thought was interesting. I don't know if you thought it was interesting, but uh, she talks about going to college. And then it kind mm-hmm. of brings up the idea that Ryu's mind is not on college. It's on this Mm-mm. mission he has. And they actually changed the mission. We'll talk about that later. But she talks about going to a school and maybe staying in Oklahoma school, trying to get him to basically, I guess, think about his future. Uh, what do you think about this scene? Like, this is something that they didn't really touch on in their relationship enough, I think, in the game. I thought it was cool. I'm, I'm glad that they... I mean, I don't think they're going to get into it any further than that. But it just definitely shows that they're they're on diverging you you know they're they're on separate paths they're not going to uh come together anytime yeah. soon and we know full well that they won't so um so before we got to the arcade we had another dream sequence and i really i like the dream sequences and i i wish they did it more in three and two mm-hmm. about his dad and learning more about his dad through ryu's point of view in this one it's him reading like a manga magazine and his dad basically tells him, that's crap, bro. Le- put that down. Read this book. And it's like all his moves that he's taught himself throughout the, you yeah. know. And this yeah. wasn't in the game, but it really ma- makes it seem like he kind of knew maybe something would happen to him in the future. And he wanted to train Ryu to protect himself, at least to me. And also there was uh, virtual Fighter figures on the on the desk. So, I mean, that was about it. What do you think about this flashback? That. Um, I, I thought it was cool. I hope we see more of those sprinkled throughout the uh, the series. But he, he was kind of a little snot. I wonder, if, did we do the carrots flashback in the last episode? I can't recall. I don't, I don't think, think so. Not no, yet. Not yet. No. They better. Um, so now we got to the arcade. You Arcade made a big, uh, uh, I guess, splash in this episode or cameo. Um, yeah. Basically, they had a virtual fighter arcade. We also got... Excite QTE 2 and uh, QTE title, the boxing one, which is like made for the game. And we also saw a Fantasy Zone tablet, like a cabinet, those uh, tabletop cabinets, the deluxe version of Space Harrier and Hang On, and a poster for Fantasy Zone. Um, what do you think about the whole arcade scene? I mean, this is actually my favorite part of Shimu is that they used to have the, these things. Mm-hmm. So uh, what do you think about your arcade making it come back here? Well, it not only made a comeback, it was massive. It was mm-hmm. like a street corner arcade, or a, a, like a, a corner arcade at a cross street. Um, and it was like multi-levels, multi-rooms. I was really surprised. Lines of uh, Virtua Fighter machines, which are like 10 years early. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it makes me wonder if people are now going to go like watch this and be like, oh yeah, Virtua Fighter was like this super popular 80s arcade game. Um, it was <laughs> one of the first 3D graphs. But uh, I thought that was really cool to see the arcade expanded. Um, just last night I was actually reading the character bios from the Shenmue um, uh, walkthrough. Mm-hmm. And the owner of the arcade, like he must really be making a lot of money now because in the... Um, in his bio, it said that he just is getting by with the arcade, and he just doesn't. He's just in it for the money, and his wife makes more money than him, and 
like he's kind of disappointed in himself and he just wants to quit yeah uh, and like travel the world like it, he seems really depressed but with this it looks like he he really is doing well with his business i just thought that was really funny yeah it was like a uh full-on like yakuza arcade with the multiple stories and stuff the the one mm -hmm. in the game it was just like a little hole in the wall a little building there's one room yeah, yeah. Um, and, and right here we have him uh, confront the the thugs that they were trying to jump him again. Um, but they changed one point of the story. Like in the game, Ryu is basically looking for revenge of Landy. That's his mission, really. That's what they made it seem like in the game. And this one, he says he wants to prove his father is innocent of what Landy accused him of, of being a killer. Mm -hmm. And so he wants to learn about his father's life, which I think is a totally different take on the game. Uh, what do you think about that change? It makes him seem a lot less vengeful. I think deep down he does want revenge. And of course. Wants, but but it's it's interesting to see that on the surface, at least, he's that's what he's telling himself and telling other people. Um, I can imagine as the series goes on, we're going to see him struggling more with that conflict. Maybe it will come out when we see him um, finally confront Londi and like be like, I'm gonna kill you. And everyone's like, oh, okay. I guess that's where this is going, <laughs> you know? And uh, this leads to him fighting these characters and then finally the old man gives him the martial arts training that you basically were just given in the game. And this one, they made a whole episode where it all comes back in the end where he finds out that this he knows how to take care of himself. So it's probably better for him to teach him what he can. Because, I mean, he's Ryu's determined at this point. And uh, I thought it was a pretty good ending for the episode. Uh, Absolutely. So this is, a you know, the second episode. Anything you want to say before we close up the video? Um, I did want to add there was actually some new material with Shen Hua in the village. Oh. And we saw characters from Shenmue 3. Oh, my God. I don't which know. really surprised I don't, me. Yeah, I had, I had a frame for that. And I guess I took it off. But, yeah, you're right. But they, it's... they had all the three characters. The old lady with and the... I've had... Yeah, I've seen people speculating, oh, I thought this was just going to be all Sega characters, but I'm like, no, I don't think there's any, des you know, they're not designating uh, Shenmue 3 separate from Shenmue 1 and 2. It's all one story. So we very well could see plot elements for 3, like the foundation being laid. We already did with the old lady, you know, and so it actually made Shenmue 3 feel a lot more a part of the trilogy to me, just to see the story of one being told and then seeing characters from three within the same episode. I thought that was really cool. And I can't wait to see more of that yeah. in the series. They also showed the fat Kung Fu teacher that's yeah. always teaching people in the village of Bei Lu. I thought that was really cool. And like, I, I told you, I just played it. So when I saw the mm -hmm. village, I'm like, oh, they got, they captured it perfect. I know this road, there's the, the yeah. tower. So I was like, they did a good job. That's cool. And it does make it seem like it's one whole game, but mm -hmm. that's our episode for shimmy the animation number two daybreak uh what do you guys think about the episode and what do you guys want to see for the future do you guys like the shimmy three i guess um adding on the story um let us know in the comments below thanks for watching bye bye